XQC defends colonialism, if we ever get to them. The Lost Ark. Yo, yo. You wanna hear a cold-hearted take? I don't know if they stole it or not, okay? History is made from conquest, wars, pillaging, taking. People that say stolen are the people who lost, okay? That's what it is. I don't wanna hear it. They tried and failed. You lost. Handle it. Holy About 30% of the world's gold is held in professional vaults just like this. Okay, while there's an, an aspect of truth to this, uh, and I can tell you this now because I've talked to two archaeologists as a Bridges, one interesting counterpoint because I asked them that. What do you think about repatriation um, and the fact that so many people argue that we, you know, should museums keep artifacts, should they not keep artifacts? One of the benefits of working with host countries or countries whose artifacts your country may have stolen a long time ago, one of the benefits of working with these host countries is that you can do... Um, is that uh, when you start working with countries and you show that you're willing to make an effort to return things that need to be returned, a lot of times these countries will work with you to do even more exhibits, right? That, hey, listen, we've got this shit, like maybe we can work together or we can work with you to like return this. You can like exchange objects around the world because these people usually want their stuff to be seen as well, but they would just also like to have ownership or be in control of it. So maybe you're holding like one thing from country X and you go to country X, so like, okay, hey, we should give this back as the right thing to do. Country X might say like, okay, cool, like let's, you can have it for three months and then give it back to us for three months and then we'll send you something else and then you can have like these rotating exhibits you can have like this collaborative um, effort between all these different countries and people and it probably would benefit us even like in a utilitarian sense not just like on the what's the moral the right thing to do just to be more cooperative with countries whose stuff you've you know might be in possession of yeah <sighs> okay destiny check last message okay i'm not even going to respond to this this is so you're i why would you repeat the same message like five times with so many typos? At Destiny, could you not say this is Hawk Republicans felt before Elab owned it and TBF you did tell him if he wants to chance it makes a so a solical media platform to quote you if you don't like it make f. My dude. Like you, you spam this message five times, you couldn't clean up, clean up the typos in between? Could you steal man his message? Um, I think he was trying to say something like, didn't you tell people if they wanted their own social media platform to build it? Uh, I think that was the point of his message. But at that, in that case, then build your own social media platform. Don't just <laughs> buy one out and then destroy it. That's a different thing. Oh, wait, hold on. Can Destiny host another seminar for drama YouTubers where he explains the Tenet media stuff to normies? I am way too lazy to research this myself, but it seems funny. I like the concept of Destiny sitting me and Tom down for six hours and giving us a college lecture every few months, so I'm less useless when discussing shit. Oh, true. Destiny discusses. I have an appointment at like five o'clock somewhere today. I'm just seeing if I can get it rescheduled. It's kind of brutal to... Eat my streaming day. Can you say more about the Sam Harris thing? You hinted at it last night. Uh, oh, they just called me and chatted. And like, if there was a current event that came up, if we like, if Sam's able to like call and hop on and like do like a 30 minute chat, not hop on. I don't think he would want to be on stream. Or I don't know. Maybe who knows? If you're wondering what this Russia disinformation looks like, here it is. If you see the following narratives on the internet, it could be Russian interference. Are you ready? Record inflation unaffordable prices for food and essential goods, risk of job losses for white Americans, privileges for people of color, threat of crime coming from people of color and immigrants, overspending on foreign policy. The United States government wants us to believe that the Russians are using Republican talking points to interfere with the election. If you're wondering what... Just, so just, if you want to be able to discuss this with more nuance... Um... The, um, it's not so much that Fuck. the, 
these aren't illegitimate talking points. The goal of Russia is not to fabricate talking points that aren't real. It's to just find highly divisive issues and then amplify the fuck out of them. Right? That's the issue. And I'm aware that this comes from a larger, like, 250-page indictment we might look into a little bit today. But... What is it? Sorry, I'm just going through links I have open. Threat of crime. Then, but anyway, we continue. Ben Shapiro. Only are isolationist on foreign policy, but they're isolationist on foreign policy mainly because they believe that the United States is a nefarious force in the world. They're sort of Howard's in or Noam Chomsky with regard to American foreign policy. America is actually bad. That horror. Have you seen evidence of Russia using left wing talking points to sow division as well? Um. Yeah, in the, so in the Mueller indictments for the IRA, I believe that um, they were, they, um, oh, let me see if I can find this. They try to attack Hillary Clinton and stuff using like BLM talking points. I don't know if there are exhibits in here. On or about October 16th, 2016, defendants and the co-conspirators used the organization-controlled Instagram account Woke Blacks to post the following message. A particular hype and hatred for Trump is misleading the people and forcing blacks to vote killery. We cannot resort to the lesser of two devils. Uh, then we'd surely be better off without voting at all. Uh, on inst uh, organization-controlled Instagram account Blacktivist that read in part, choose peace and vote for Jill Stein. Trust me, it's not a wasted vote. An organization-controlled United Muslims of America uh, posting an anti-vote message. Uh, American Muslims are boycotting elections today. Most of the American Muslim voters review, refuse to vote for Hillary Clinton because she wants to continue the war on Muslims in the Middle East and, vote, and voted yes for invading Iraq. Organization-controlled Facebook account Stop AI. The post alleged that Hillary Clinton has already committed voter fraud during the Democrat Iowa caucus. That 10 GOP account was a fucking Russian account. I don't know any, who anybody remembers this account. This had like 250,000 followers. I think I've interacted with this account before in 2016. We all, I think we all thought this was just like the Tennessee GOP official Twitter account or whatever. Jesus, but okay. What is this? This is four months ago. Then, but anyway, we continue. Ben Shapiro only are isolationist on foreign policy, but they're isolationist on foreign policy mainly because they believe that the United States is a nefarious force in the world. They're sort of Howard's in or Noam Chomsky with regard to American foreign policy. America is actually bad. That horseshoe theory. Okay, so you could tell that Ben Shapiro is a neocon already because of how he's using the term isolationism. He's basically using it as a slur and he's using it incorrectly. There are a lot of people who are anti-war who are not isolationists, uh, myself included. I don't believe that America should be the world's police and should be dropping bombs on all these civilians, but I'm not an isolationist. I believe in diplomacy. I believe in free trade. I believe in sometimes even. But I Remember, anti-war, anybody that describes themselves as anti-war is just retarded. It doesn't make sense to be anti-war when the only people you ever come down on are people that defend themselves. Okay, calling, you, calling yourself anti-war is just retarded okay it's just it's just it's an it's almost always a nonsense position to take um like you can be against starting wars i think that's probably good the un is supposed to be against that position like you can be against starting wars that's fine but to just say like you're anti-war so you don't want ukraine to defend themselves or you don't want uh, it's dumb
for being paid by this generous benefactor, and it turns out actually it was RTT. All right, so people here took money, and they didn't know where the money was coming from, and it didn't change the way they talked on the internet. No. Got it. That was worth the press conference. I'm really glad Garland came out and said something. <laughs> Good one. Jesse Waters. Has this guy been on Fox News for more than five years, or is he relatively newish, or how, how long-term is, uh, is Waters? He started as O'Reilly's lackey and he's been around for a while. Oh yeah, he did interview that, the anti-work. <laughs> Come on. From Reddit. It's a disturbing practice to watch how often DOJ indictments are treated as gospel. Unproven prosecutorial assertions are often proven exaggerated, false, invented, without evidence, etc. But a political indictment two months before an election deserves extra skepticism. Did he say the same with Comey's statements about Hillary's emails? <laughs> hmm sacred democracy here you see on the screen the pro the, the indictment oh we get a full a real lawyer analysis oh boy hold on one second I hate this guy. Hack fuck. <sighs> uh, federal indictments are generally really well researched, and it is very, 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 very difficult to beat a federal case. Um, you're almost always convicted or pleading guilty. Uh, to some charge if you got a federal indictment your way. Sorry, I just had to tweet at him to bully him. Okay. Minuscule amount of money. What a fucking hack. 100K per video is not minuscule in the YouTube market. Those are Mr. Beast level of endorsement deals. Correct. That is a, especially for not promoting a particular thing or taking content direction. I have said before that Tim Pool is a very large content creator, and he absolutely is, but $100,000 for a five or 10 minute video without even promoting a particular product, no CTAs, no call to action, no, uh, no affiliate links or no like sales metrics or no, um, you know, no incentive, no like uh, achievement, uh, not achievement, uh, performance goals, no, no, nothing like that. That's an insane sponsor. You should immediately be thinking, hmm. Wait, let me use the restroom real quick. Yes, okay. My thing got rescheduled for tomorrow. Let me use the restroom real quick. Hold on. We're going to talk to Abar. Ooh. Ooh. 
Why did Destiny burn Bridges' podcast so much yesterday? Wait, what? When? How? When you said the original concept was impossible. How is that burning it? <laughs> what? I just said it's difficult because the original idea was to bring people who were politically very dissimilar and then to have like challenging conversations. But I've noticed now that that's impossible because if somebody thinks there's going to truly be a challenging conversation, they don't want to talk. <laughs> Myron would be a good guess. Yes, with the exception of Myron. He'd probably be like the only person, yeah. Do you think a lot of our history could be written by the victors and could be biased and or disingenuous to actual events that occurred? No. Historians write history, not politicians. There's too many people around the world and too many academic institutions that have too vested an interest in getting things correct um, that the idea that all of it is somehow fabricated. Like there might be things that people miss due to certain biases and whatnot for sure. But the idea that it's just like written favorably to the victor or whatever, we, if that was true, we wouldn't know anything about the Trail of Tears. We wouldn't know anything about the US history with slavery. We wouldn't know anything about the atrocities that, you know, different countries, like it just doesn't, that immediately fails. Like, Here you see on the screen the problem that the indictment. All right, hi, what's up? All right, I gotta ask just a couple questions. You can make me feel less retarded about this whole topic. Yeah. Okay, is it normal for independent journalists to accept money to do what it essentially is like pro one party content? So, for example, let's say even if you are Republican in your nature, and well, not nature, but like in the values that you espouse, is it normal to accept money from political parties or independent groups um, in favor of said party? Probably, yeah. Like if you get hired by any media company, like if you're working for the Daily Wire or if you're working for, um, yeah, I, like the people in Progressive Victory are all going to be like progressive talking points. Like, yeah, that's probably pretty normal. You get paid by like the Stephen Crowder people, the Young Turks, breaking points. Like, yeah, I would say it's probably pretty normal, yeah. Okay, maybe I misunderstood, but isn't the whole point of independent journalism that you are free from any kind of corporate interest or government influence? Wow, wouldn't that be great? That's not true, and it's never been true. I agree with you. That would be well, the point. But that's the definition. of That's the one that they espouse. Like they, when they talk about we're one hundred percent funded by you guys, the super chatters, or we're one hundred percent funded, you know, through our own labor, not through corporate interests or like direct advertisements. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm, I mean, I'm if that, I mean, if, supposed to be that. If the, if I mean, if that's how they advertise themselves, then yeah. But the reality is, if you have any kind of sponsorship whatsoever, you you probably have to keep that in mind to some extent, right? Okay, yes. Mm -hmm. And and let's say I agree that, you know, if you if you take some fucking ad for um Manscaped or something like that, it's probably not as corporately involved as let's say taking an ad from some political focus group that like runs super PACs for Trump. I feel like those two things are very distinctly different, no? Mm. Like I agree that they're distinctly different, but there can be overlap in surprising ways. So like le the statements that I made about like Trump um about Trump, the Trump people getting shot at Trump rallies or whatever the fuck, like people were reaching out to people that didn't even sponsor anymore, to old sponsors, trying to get me like canceled from those sponsors and shit. And if I still would have been carrying like Surfshark or whatever, they probably would have dropped me. So even state, even companies that aren't political can be influenced if you stir up enough shit. So right. now is that okay. the same as I'm like dictating a media diet to you? Maybe not, but like, would it keep you from saying something that you feel strongly about that's very on the fringes? Maybe, you know, yeah. Okay, okay, cool. Um. Now, I've seen claims that these guys didn't know what they were doing it. Um, now, if you were to steel man their position, how would you do it? I might be able to buy that for, um, for, for Lauren Southern, Taylor Hansen, and Matt Christensen, only because I haven't seen in particular what they're getting paid, and maybe for Benny Johnson. But for Dave Rubin and Tim Poole, that was an ungodly amount of money. Um, Wait, how much? How much were the Lower and Southerns getting paid? 
I, I don't, none of that information was published in the indictment. But what we do know is I think it was a little over $10 million was paid out in a year. And like 8.7 million of that went to those three commentators, Dave Rubin, Tim Pool, and Benny Johnson. So it would have been a little over a million or around a million for the other three. So I don't, I don't know how much they were all paid. I mean, all of those people are like infinitely smaller YouTubers. So I think in proportion to what they normally make, this is still an exponential amount of money. Um, that is possible, but like when you look at the channel, I think I'm pretty sure uh, Lauren and the Matt guy. I think those were the two people that were bringing in most of the views. Um, Dave Rubin, bro, we were looking through this channel. Dave Rubin's videos are getting like 700 views a video, <laughs> 3,000 yeah. views. Um, yeah, it's like embarrassing. 2.9 thousand views, 513 views, 1.4k views. Yeah. Okay, but but I think I remember reading one of the texts from the transcripts, and, and I think at one point, I think they were asked to do the whole Tucker Carlson grocery store thing, and then one of the producers for um, one of the commentary channels was like, I feel like this is very shilly. And then one of the Russian handlers was like, still, we were needed, and then the producer kind of acquiesced. Mm -hmm. Do we know what video that is that tim pool or dave rubin ended up covering the tucker carlson thing so i that was yeah that was the tucker carlson thing i don't know if um any of the six commentators covered that video i think that was just posted to their to the tenant media social media account i believe okay okay and when you hear tim pool say he doesn't know is it just because of the money that you feel like he should have known better absolutely what an insane thing to be getting so much fucking money and not question. You're getting paid $400,000 a month. You're getting paid when about- When I saw 100K per video, I literally jumped out of my seat. I, I was like Mr. Beast levels of of income for a sponsorship. Yeah, and, and not even just not even just for a video. It was for a video with no call to action, with no product being promoted, without any specific content direction. Like how? That's, an, that's for what, a 12 minute video? That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. And, he's not charging and, those and, rates. He's not charging. Uh, he's not charging twenty percent of those rates to anybody in the industry for a video like that. Nobody's paying for a video like that. That's insane. Yeah. No. The, By the, the people... way, Sorry, I've what? yeah, I've noticed Tim Pool has become more hostile to Ukraine over the past year. Like it. It sounds to me that if he's getting paid that kind of money, and they're not handing him some sort of script with some sort of buzzwords to say or specific topic to cover like it sounds to me that he was being fed lines that he needed to say like especially for that kind of money they're giving him it's possible but if that's true i don't think that's true um because he directly said that that wasn't true in his tweet and if he directly contradicts that and he knows how sprawling this investigation is now and there's evidence to the contrary oof, that looks really bad well tim pool's an idiot so it, it is something you do Maybe, sure, but I, that would be really dumb. Yeah. Just to come back to the money, it is it is so ungodly to think about how much that is. Because I can tell, that just for the viewers so they can understand, imagine a viewer averaging about a million views per video. If they're doing advertisement and they're just doing some run-of-the-mill advertisement where their channel's not necessarily connected to the product itself, but, you know, think of Surfshark, think of Manscaped. They'll, they'll advertise on anything irrespective of whether it's geared towards men or tech bros. You're looking at anywhere from 8,000 USD to maybe 12,000 if you're lucky. Now, some channels are a little bit more highly specified. So think of Marquise Brownlee. Now, he's averaging a million views per video and he's doing tech related stuff and he gets a tech sponsorship. You could see him going up to 30,000, maybe 45,000 for some of his sponsors if he was to take one. Why? Because it's like a target audience or yeah, finance. And for, these are for million plus views videos, not for. Million plus. Not for Right. 1k or 3k views on a video right. and these so are for a call to action for a specific video product is, yeah. is, is, is insane for videos that are not performing well <laughs> this is outperforming the market by like 10x 100x in terms yeah. of like the actual viewership mm -hmm. and the fact that the money kept coming in the, the, i know for me if i was offered this kind of money i would be asking why they're paying me so so much more like 20 times more than anyone's ever paid me. So I'd be asking questions like, where is this money coming from? Is it legal? But I think as a political commentary channel who's being asked to do politically inclined content on behalf of like one party or one group, yep. I think you have to be extra suspicious. One trillion percent. Like if this was a deal from Rumble, 
I'd be a little bit more like, okay, uh, maybe you're, not, you know, they got, it's a, I think they're publicly traded. You get a lot of investors. Sure, maybe. Maybe for Rumble, I'd be like, okay. But Tenant Media, literally, you're like, what? You're the face of this channel, right? There are six content creators brought on. And I think the most well known were like you, Dave, and uh, Benny, and Lauren. Like, you're, you're but you are un, inarguably, you're the largest face on this channel. I thought it was initially a Tim Pool funded media channel. That's what I thought initially um, when it was first announced, because he's obviously the largest face, you know, that's being used to promote this. And for him to not even question where that money is coming from is, is, negligent well, again, at best I, I just don't believe he, I, I don't believe he didn't question it because his producer was questioning it well not questioning yeah. it but questioning like the kind of content like, even the producer was being fed sometimes like this feels very shilly there's sure. no way as a producer you don't get told these kinds of things and you don't discuss it with the person you're working for this is not a thing that happens yeah. if I was telling someone to work with a company and they're saying this they're coming back to me any advertisement deal any kind of production deal I'm not just a mouthpiece right and Tim Pool takes pride in the fact that he does a lot of their own research or he looks and he reads over this stuff <laughs> investigative with journalist there's yeah no Way these conversations didn't happen behind the channels that's not well I, you're, you're talking about the highest level of like i closed my eyes when a bag of money was offered to me that yeah. just doesn't seem plausible Tim, well we know tim pool is a massive massive grifter uh so yeah in all likelihood he probably knew something fishy was going on but didn't really care because the money was so good went with it figured if anything happens he can just you know act act dumb Maybe actually, yeah. I mean, it might be enough for them to never actually question it. They know it's probably corrupt, but like, why question it and ruin your fucking money bag, right? You don't think they questioned it at all? Somebody no, no. I'm saying, I'm saying. Oh no, they did. Like, no, no, no. Like, in terms of when I say not question, I mean they're like, yeah, maybe it is coming from bad sources, but who the fuck cares? I'm getting paid bank, and then that's it. You just don't ever say anything else about it, right? Well, okay, I, actually, the, I'm curious. The, the, would you not be worried? Like, I know I would be if I was doing political commentary and some entity that's not entirely clear is offering me hundreds of thousands i would be like is this illegal that that, that would be something that would cost well, bro i worried about my kit contract for that yeah i was like fuck i don't know man this seems like a lot of money i'm not sure sometimes i kind of wonder yeah i was worried about if i was approached by like if progressive victory was coming in like hey Dustin, we want you to approach this shit we're gonna pay you a hundred thousand dollars a month instead of that's like yeah i it's it should set off so many alarm bells in your head especially when it's a political company, yeah, it's a political company headed by a political person that you know, no offense, is not that wealthy, okay? Lauren Chen is not that successful. The Blaze doesn't pay that well, okay? But you're like, yeah, you know, I'm going to go ahead and drop half a million dollars on you every month. It's just, it's absurd. It's so stupid. Like, well, they, at the very, at the be, in the best case scenario, all of your credibility is gone in terms of being able to critically analyze anything. Why would I trust this guy to be able to find any type of conspiracy ever if it was literally you you were part of it. it you were like it would be less embarrassing for him to say that he was compromised and he knew he knew it rather than for him to be like oh i had no idea i was a useful dipshit the entire time like how could you be yeah. so stupid and, and and i think we have to stop attributing everything to incompetence or to all this like oh just like what do you call it weaponized incompetence Who, who's i feel like you're the one who talked uh, yes about you? yeah correct yep okay. and i yeah this, I shot this a piece is what it feels like yeah. people are weaponizing incompetence once again i'm sorry this is some of the highest levels of retardation for people who consider themselves very politically active and in the know and yep. also conspiracy brained like they will yes. pick apart everything to fit their narrative but then a bag of money is offered to them and they didn't question nothing. it's insane i'm sorry you're selling me a bridge and like I, I'm pointing like point this out, I don't be able to know this. From in in one year, this company paid out okay to three content creators in one year to Dave Rubin, Tim Pool, and Benny Johnson about as much money as Hunter Biden made working for Burisma for five years. Okay, in one year <laughs> they got this much money. Like, how can you talk about any conspiracy ever? This is the most obvious shit in the universe. And yeah, you're right. Conservatives do this thing where they'll sit in a room, they'll watch a girl and a guy go into the other room, and they'll hear her screaming for 30 minutes and then come back out like bloodied and bruised. And you'll be like, bro, did that guy just beat the shit out of her? And the conservatives will look you in the eye, dead in the eye, into the, into the ovals of your soul. They will look into you and they will say, uh, I didn't actually see it happen. Did you? How can you even prove that? Like, why would you assume that? Do you even fucking know? Like, they're the most shameless Bad faith people need it. They're shameless. Shameless. And, and they always go through the trouble of, like, connecting the dots. Oh, well, yeah. Hillary was here at this time of day, and at the same time, Epstein's plane was here. So, I'm not saying, but we could infer, right? They, they constantly make these inferences yeah. that people are always operating under this. But all of a sudden, when they're literally offered hundreds of thousands of dollars that are unreasonable for what they're doing, they want you to say, well, he... Do you have any proof? Do you have like direct proof that he said he took? Well, yeah. I don't know. To me, the, 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 just beyond They're the double standard, 
they can they can look at everything as critically as they want through their bias lens, but the moment that it's their own un, un, like actions under the microscope, all of a sudden they're retards. Yeah, it, it, it's or just it's too the, much. Like, for me. and it's so easy. Just like imagine it on the other end. Like imagine if I'm involved. Imagine we find out that Progressive Victory was paying me uh, fifty thousand dollars. I'm sorry, we'll say five hundred thousand dollars. I guess that's what this is worth. Five hundred thousand dollars a month, and then you found out that Progressive Victory was actually funded by fucking Israel or by some Jewish org. Mike, it would be over for me, bro. Like it would. Right. That would be like the. Like, like you're getting paid that much money and it was funded by Israel and you had all these talking points like what the, like it would be over it'd be over Thanks. it'd be over yeah and I'd be making a video about it the next day if I found out <laughs> Destiny was taking money from an organization that was funded by APAC and he was being paid per video some absurd amount 1000 percent I'm like yeah. Destiny's definitely shilling without without question because how aggressively he talks about this stuff and how he's been if I found out you were any any way being paid I would 100 percent publicly say you are definitely shit. As an so investigative the fact that these journalist, guys turn around and try to use that to shield. No, 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 no. Yeah, they're they're clearly lying. Like again, it's in the transcript. Like their their producer was talking about how this is a little too shilly and yeah. it's making me feel uncomfortable. Like they and I I mean I've noticed this too. Like you can see Tim Pool's stance on Russia Ukraine change a little bit, and it's gotten. More towards uh, literally claiming Ukraine is an enemy of the United States yeah. versus what he was saying before that, well, Russia isn't that bad. And since they're not that bad, we shouldn't get involved. Like, clearly, he's be being fed lines. Yeah. Clearly. And I liked his tweet where he's like, this, guys, this show is just the culture wars. And we deal with very unpolitical subjects like spirituality and video games. And I'm like, bro, kill yourself. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, but yeah, the guy who complains about fucking Buzz Lightyear. Yeah, you, you know, I, I got offered a sponsorship deal by this. I think it was like a credit card company, or no, it's like a debit card thing that also helps your credit. Okay, mm -hmm. and they were offering like a crazy amount. I just did, I just did my Google searches on them, and like I'd see the other YouTubers that sponsored them, and I was just like looking into this stuff, and just some about it just seemed off. They kind of popped out of nowhere. They're kind of new, and sure enough, within a year they ended up being defunct because what they were doing was essentially illegal. Um, but it was one of those things where the money was really good for a company that didn't have much of a reputation. The sensible thing is just like, where is this coming from? Is this legitimate? You look into it. Now, if I was doing sponsored content where the entirety of the video had to be about a specific topic, that means that they're sending in a script with overlaying ideas. My producer has to overlook that and then bring it to me, and then we have to have a production meeting. And then you guys have to have a discussion about the fact that you're getting paid $100,000 for this shitbag video. The last five you did for this company didn't perform that well or didn't even get a return on investment at all. It's just hard for me to imagine you're sitting there in that production company. You know, you I'm, you know what I'm meetings. curious? I wonder if he... I wonder if anybody else in his company knew how much money he was getting paid for that. Like, do you think they paid their fucking... Do you think their oh, guests knew? Wait, they, fuck! They know. They, they know. They no, know. There's plenty not of the guests. Know. Not the guests. Because I think I was a guest on this stupid fucking Culture Wars. That was the show that I went on, wasn't it? Was it the Culture no, Wars one? No, not the guests. Not the guests. Not the guests, no. <sighs> It was. This was the one that I went on. He got paid $100,000? I made $100,000 for Tim Pool in this fucking episode? Fuck me. This is such bullshit. Yeah, and there's no... Yeah, I wonder... No, no. I'm sorry. When I said the other people, I meant the other people in his company because... Do you think they would have wanted a slice of that? I wonder if he just like pocketed a lot of that money on his own. No, 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 no. They know the amounts that are being paid. The reason why I know they know is because when they're going through these contracts, it's going through associations. Temple has assistants. The assistants see the contracts. The assistants see the invoices. They're forwarding it. Temple is not getting everything directly and handling all the back end. You just don't at that mm, level when you're having. I bet. Parts. I bet he. I bet he does. He, if unless he's a total dipshit, I bet he manages a lot of it. Well, didn't, you know, he a, I, hold on, didn't he have a producer that was the middleman talking to these people? Um, no, no. The producers in the indictment, I believe, were producers who were brought on by um, the two founders, Lauren Chen and her husband. I don't think they were hired by Tim's people. They were other people that were brought on to work for Tenet. But they're not like, I don't oh, think these okay. are Russians. They're quote unquote victims of the scam. But um, okay. yeah, I don't think those were Tim's people. Yeah. I bet. I wonder, I want to hear statements by Tim's uh, coworkers like that, the crazy dudes. I want to know if any of them knew how much money his company was bringing in from this uh, tenant deal. I'm so curious well, about that. And again, speaking of the money, like I've been offered some ridiculous deals. Like uh, I remember like the most stupid one. Somebody said I could make like 200,000 in three months with this like uh, weird food charity thing. And, like, I just knew it was bullshit. Like, the guy was just clearly fucking lying. And he was trying to basically scam me into promoting some 
shitty cereal company he had. Okay, like, but we're, I think you're being uncharitable because the, the, the idea is not that they're coming to you. Imagine if Destiny came to you and then he offered you the deal because I think Tim Pool got offered this through Lauren Chen. Yep. So okay, if, if there's a level of trust there. Right. And I think yeah, if I'm being charitable sense. to Tim, then I could understand a little bit more. But even then, that's it's just too that's much still money. weird. You should know that's the still metrics. weird. Yeah. yeah. Okay, actually, let me ask you about Lauren Chen because, you know, as a fellow Montrealer, you know, mm -hmm. finding out she's a Russian ass, it's fascinating. Um, what do you think about her involvement in all this? She knew. She knew the whole time. She was directly involved. She's, like, probably already arrested would be my guess. She's arrested? That would be my guess, yeah. Okay, wait. Well, the, the would two have people, had to have known. The, 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 the two people that are indicted um, un, under this thing. Are the two Russians, yep. Okay, but those are not Lauren Chen, but you think it's like a secret indictment kind of thing? Yeah, this indictment was secret. That's why this was a sealed indictment. It was unsealed. My guess is the other two are probably already arrested, Lauren and her husband. Because in this indictment, it lays out mens rea. It lays out um, like criminal intent for Lauren Chen and her husband. Like when it talks about her Googling. Um, yeah. Like when she is Google, she asks one of the uh, Russians. Well, first of all, when her and her husband talk about getting paid, they call them the Russians <laughs> over and over again. Um, and then it also, um, it, it, there's a time where she's talking to somebody. She asks her something. Okay. Today marks two weeks since I submitted the invoice for August. Any idea for the delay? We're signing the large contracts and need to be certain we will get the funding to pay these people. When the persona didn't respond, Lauren Chen, uh, she Googled the current time in Moscow <laughs> because she knew that they were Russians. Yeah, like she, <laughs> she's fucked. They, they're like this she's right toast. here. The only reason they have this is like, in my opinion, is laying out mens rea for her and, pro and probably her husband that they knew the entire time. And a lot of this sealed indictment includes that. So my guess is there's indictments on the way for them if they're not already arrested. That's my guess. I could be wrong, but... There has to be. There, like, there's just no possible way. You know, um... Wait, 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 but I, they're, they're Canadian. Are yep. they even going to fall under the DOJ's um, scope? Yeah. Uh, yeah the criminal would. behavior, well, one, they, she has a company in Tennessee that she was routing most of the money through for Tenant Media, and two, a lot of the money laundering, because a lot of these transactions were mislabeled. It was wire fraud, basically, coming in through New York, a bank in New York, um... So then the only question is, would, would Canada extradite or would Canada do like yeah, complimentary they would, charges? They would. They, would. That, that, they yeah. would extradite. I didn't know if they could be charged. Yeah. So, yep. You know, I, I'm not terribly familiar with Lauren Chang's or Chen's whole political view. Is she like a crazy wacko fascist? Basically, yeah. Or, okay, she is. I, I only debated her once on veganism, and she said that she couldn't get vitamin Naruto if she went vegan. I don't know what that means. I feel like that's an anime, but yeah. yeah. You know, this all makes perfect <laughs> sense now, because I always thought, based off of the kind of content that a lot of conservative creators were putting out there, there's no way they could afford the lifestyle that they were living. Why? Now Which I'm ones? To believe, now I'm just starting to believe that they're all just, a lot of them are being paid off, and paid off in huge amounts. This is like actually yeah. making everything clear because you hear the rumors. Oh, a destiny's paid off by this, or these people are paid off by that. But well, a lot of them, their it, numbers don't even match how, the kind of lifestyle that they're living. Yeah. But now that I'm, that I'm how like, how are you wired? buying a house when you're like raking in maybe like a million views per month at most? Like I know what kind of money you're taking home from that, and I know you don't have the kind of subscription deals that you're like portraying. So. Now that I'm learning, I'm like, that's how you own two homes. Okay, this is like, it's starting to come together. Yeah. Well, even the Daily Wire, don't they get, like, funding from billionaire fracking industry jackasses? Uh, like, I don't know how much external funding they get, but the Daily Wire legitimately does a fuck ton. The Daily Wire should be all legit. They get so many, so much money in subscriptions. Well, I'm not saying, yeah, well, I'm not saying that um, they're just totally funded by you know, just random billionaires or political, you know, organizations. I know now um, they've gotten really huge, but I'm pretty sure before they were actually getting a pretty significant amount of funding just from a, we a few weird conservative groups and from some, like, oil people. Oh, I don't know. No clue about that. But Okay, Destiny, I want to get you on the record. Uh-oh. Would you ever accept money to do political content uh, on a political entity? Could be the conservative party or whatever. Would you accept money to make that kind of content, even if it aligned with your values? I mean, I don't think there's anything wrong with accepting money for it. 
you just have to like declare it. <laughs> like that's yeah. the big issue here, right? Um, like when I'm doing work with Progressive Victory, even though I've never been paid by them, like it's pretty obvious that I'm doing work that's in line with, you know, what they want. And it's just like a Progressive Victory event. The issue is just when you're not disclosing. That's a huge, huge, huge issue. Um, yeah. I mean, like, would I ever yeah, take like money if- and not disclose? I mean, like, I'm sure there's some theoretical. If the fucking Mossad came to me with like a billion dollars, <laughs> I would hope. But principally, I would say no. But realistically, no, I love my country. Fuck that. Yeah, like, I, I'm very pro-Israel. If uh, the Israeli government came to me and said, here's, like, hundreds of thousands of dollars to, I don't know, promote some idea, as long as it aligns with my values, I would take the money. But I'd also disclose that, you know, what I'm doing has been funded by, like, Israel. Um, what would you say to the critics that would then look at you and say, well, how can we really trust your judgment or your take on any of this, considering you're being financed by the very entity that you are now defending publicly? Wouldn't that yeah, just, like, my, you, you, you'd be getting paid, but wouldn't that be a hurt to your kind of credibility? Yeah, so I don't think it necessarily would be because, one, I disclosed that I'm getting funded. I'm not hiding it. I'm admitting to it. And I think I've built up a reputation so far where um, people know that I'll only accept these sorts of th- these sorts of transactions if it already aligns with my values. So it's not like I'm being bought and paid for to say this. It's that I would have said this anyway, but this company wants to work with me and and give me money to spread the message further. Okay. What about you, Destiny? Do you think it would hurt your, people's ability to take? your bias out of it um it, yeah this would super depend on what like what w- this was for right like uh i don't know if i would ever take broad political money just because it probably wouldn't be worth it for the per- even the perceived hit for my credibility um yeah. yeah but i mean like let's say there was a company that wanted to donate some pro affirmative action company that wanted to donate to do like an event to you know I don't even know, to do some social outreach that I was going to go to an event for to promote or something. Like, I would probably be open about that. I wouldn't care about that. Yeah, like, all these, half these fucking losers already accuse me of being, like, funded by the Mossad anyway. Also, by the way, over the past month, I kept saying over and over again, listen, if any other content creator, like Candace Owens, um, wants to have a full disclosure of all of our income sources to a third party and have those published online, I would do that 100%. I would do that with any of these fucking guys. But there's a reason none of them would ever agree to do that ever. But, yeah. Well, oh, do you think they're being paid? Um, or they're getting money from sources in percentages that they don't want people to know about. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, that's all for my questions. I appreciate you, boss. All right. I'll leave you careful. Oh, wait. Actually, before I leave, what do you think the final outcome is going to be for the likes of Tim Pool and them? I know you think Lauren Chen and them are going to jail, probably, but what about the rest? Um, almost no impact. Conservatives have no values and no principles and no standards. No, so. no, I'm not talking about the political impact. I'm actually talking about their livelihood. Do you actually think like there's a potential secret indictments coming towards Tim Pool and the others? The language of these indictments makes it pretty clear, at least in the indictment so far, that none of the commenters are implicated. And I don't have any reason to believe right now that they are. But that could change. Who knows? When you say implicated, what do you mean? Implicated in criminal behavior. They're described Uh, essentially as victims in this. And the... So so, so, so Tim Pool was right. He was a victim. That's how it's described, yes. So, for instance, um, in uh, paragraph four... Um, Kalashnikov and Afana Yesvia, I can't pronounce their names, founder one and founder two, which is Lauren Chen and Liam Donovan, that's Lauren and her husband, Lauren Chen and her husband, also worked together to deceive two U.S. online commentators, commentator one and two, who respectively have, you know, so many YouTube subscribers. Commenter, commentator one and commentator two are Dave Rubin and Tim Pool. So that's what the language of the indictment makes it sound. Well, just to be clear, you can be a victim of a crime and be part of a crime and still get convicted. So that's just, that's only the outline of this indictment. Yeah, that's why I'm just saying so that just for because, the language of this yeah, indictment, that, so, there could be something different that changes it, but that's what it says, yeah. So okay. it, it is still very possible that they could just dig into Tim Pool and then discover that he knew about the shit and was complicit in it. Possibly, okay. yeah. But, yeah. All right, then. That's all for me, boys. Okay. Have fun, be careful. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, talk to you real quick about that stupid Lex Friedman interview with Donald Trump. Yeah, what about it? Yeah, uh, this is kind of typical of Lex Friedman. He's kind of a boring idiot who asks stupid questions, and when his guests give stupid answers, he gives absolutely no pushback. So 
Um, like, and, and I, I think that was probably the worst interview he's ever done in respect to that kind of behavior. Like, uh, at the beginning of the interview, Trump was talking about how the election was fucking rigged. Um, he was talking about the negotiation with uh, Ukraine ending the war. And then Lex doesn't go over any, like, doesn't point out that, no, the election wasn't stolen. Like, you still believe that stupid shit? Or, like, are, are you actually going to give territory to Russia? None of that. Uh, like, and that was, like, the entire interview. And he asked just stupid fucking random questions that had, like, nobody's interest in. I can't stand the guy. I, I don't understand how anybody watches a stupid podcast. It's just absolutely worthless. Yeah, the interview was pretty disappointing. I don't disagree. Yeah, and there was no pushback or well, substantive debating on anything. Well, yet. I, w I would I would say Lex Friedman's entire fucking channel is absolutely worthless. Like, at least Joe Rogan, like, stupid, stupid shit happens on Joe Rogan. But, I mean, at least the guy, when he notices he gets a weird answer or disagrees, will give some kind of pushback. Lex Friedman... You can say the most ridiculous fucking shit ever. You could say, did you know the Holocaust never happened? And Lex Friedman would be like, oh, that's interesting that you have that opinion. So, like, uh, what do you think of this other thing? That That's all he fucking does. He is worthless. <laughs> yeah, he's, uh, he, yeah, his interviews are <laughs> there's something else. I'm not going to disagree. Oh, yeah. dude, his, his, his debates suck, too. Like, when you were on his podcast for the debate with Ben Shapiro... Worst fucking moderator of all time gives you like five minutes to speak on incredibly complex topics and you're only allowed to respond to the person once until you move on to the next. Like, fuck him. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, it was, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty bad for challenging pushback. I'm not going to disagree. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I, 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 I think he deliberately does this, by the way, because he's a fucking scumbag, and he just wants to get in as many guests, high-profile guests, as he can. So if he develops a reputation on the platform for being this hard-hitting journalist who asks tough questions, he's never going to get anybody on like Elon Musk. So he deliberately does this horseshit just so that he can get on bigger guests. But it, it's so perplexing still because who the fuck would watch this shit? Yeah, but I think I, that's I always, that's the issue with trying to make these connections, right? Because for a long time, well, not for a long time, but for a decent amount of time, like this is how I was able to reach out and talk to like Ben Shapiro and Jordan Peterson. And I realize this now that you just, there are so many areas that you can't touch. You just have to be willing to play ball. And Lex is willing to play ball, I guess, a lot more than I am. Um, and other people are willing to play ball less than me. And they don't talk to anybody. So, yeah, it's just very frustrating. The media, all of the media uh, environments are very isolated from each other. And that's an intentional thing. There's a reason why Ben Shapiro and Stephen Carter will never debate anybody ever on a serious topic that breaches, like, a, an area that they don't want to talk about. Like, these people are very intentional with, with who they confront, you know? Yeah, because they, they'll look like fucking morons and then their audience is going to leave them. Kind of, yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, have fun with the rest of your day, dude. Yeah, thanks a lot. Have fun. Be careful. Take care. Um, okay, just as a quick heads up, all right, while I have your attention, all right? If you work for a company, whether you're a management or an engineer or a developer or whatever, okay, I do not ever, I never, ever, 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 ever want bullshit ass fucking pop ups from your program on my desktop unless I opt in. If I opt in, then you can rape me with as many pop ups as you want, okay? I've just spent like 20 minutes digging this program, okay? Fuck you, Zoom. I don't even know when you synced with my Google Calendar, okay? I do not need you to pop up shit from my Google Calendar onto my desktop. I never asked for that. I don't even know how to opt out of it. I don't know where the fuck these even come from, okay? As an opt-in, sure. But why the fuck would you ever think I want pop-ups all over my fucking desktop from your dog shit ass fucking program? Fuck you. <sighs> Okay, sorry. Anyway. Lauren was carrying this channel on her back. <laughs> Jesus. Of the six of the top six videos, Lauren's documentary, Lauren video, Tim Pool, Lauren, Lauren, Lauren. These are wait, these are all three Lauren, right? Damn. And then Tim Tim Tim. Lauren, 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 Lauren. 
Taylor. Taylor. Lauren, Lauren, Lauren. Christian, uh, Matt Christensen. Lauren, 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 Lauren. She's got to be the one who feels the most mad about this. Oh, my God. She was getting paid how much compared to Tim Pool and Dave Rubin, who weren't doing fuck all for this channel. She was carrying this channel on her back. Okay, sorry. Let's see what this dipshit has to say. Is it as simple as hot woman equals views? Surely her independent channels are better than the male counterparts. Uh, my guess is going to be is Lauren was probably the only one that was actually making unique content for this channel because it looks like it looks like these. Oh no 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 no! The culture war. Oh, well, the culture wars might be unique content. But it, it looks like the other stuff was just like copy, like the Dave Rubin stuff. Is he making this for Tenet or are these just clipped from his ordinary programs? Actually, Dave Rubin's not even that popular on his own ordinary shit. We have another clip. We do. This is for... The Culture Wars episode you were in was on Tim Pool's main channel. Yeah. I, so I don't know how many other content creators, the Christensen guy and the Taylor person, maybe those two were making unique content. But I don't know if any of this other stuff was posted on any of Lauren's, um, any of her own channels. Was Chen paid to do any content? She didn't post. No, she was just paid as the manager. All right. What is this? Here you see on this. Hey, what's hey, up? Uh, real quick, before we're talking about anything else. Um, are you doing your uh, appointment still, or did they get rescheduled? No, it got rescheduled. Okay, cool. All right. Just wanted to put dinner around it. Okay, um, oh. So I didn't read the uh, I didn't read the full thing. So you can tell me if this part's in it. Do they have the contract in there by any chance? Nope. Okay. So I think what probably was done, like when it's like, why did they get this much, you know, whatever, like Tim Pool's that show you did, uh, it was live streamed on that tenant channel, but then the VODs go to Tim's channel. So they probably had something in there where it's like, okay, you guys have built these massive platforms before, so we're gonna pay you this much money to help us build our platform, right? We have some things we wanna cover, messaging, all that stuff. But that was probably why it wasn't like super suspicious. It's like, well, yes, they, they wanna use our brand to build their content, mm, so. Nope, that makes it even more suspicious. Um, and I saw that too. I don't know if I ever pointed that when I was on stream, but the language in here, these are for shittier contracts. Um, hold on, it's a non-exclusive right here. So Commentator 2, who is Tim Pool, his contract, which was between Commentator 2's production company and Tenant Media, um, provided for weekly videos to be hosted by, uh, by Tim Pool and live streamed by Tenant Media. Uh, in exchange for a fee of 100000 per video, Tim Pool's production company granted Tenant Media a non-exclusive, non-transferable license. Non-exclusive means he's allowed to post the video on his own channel. This is usually right. what you do when you get a lower fee. You'll say, listen, um, I'm gonna make content for your channel, but I don't want it to be exclusive. I wanna be able to repost it. So let's, we're gonna pull the price down a little bit, but I wanna do a non-exclusive license so that I still can post the content on my own channel. That would usually drive the price down. Okay, first of all, I'm sorry, I had to adjust course, but mm -hmm. I get what you're saying. Uh, I'm not defending Tim, first of all. Okay, let's make that clear. All right. Yeah, I never um, said you were defending Tim. I'm just saying that this, no, um, that this, uh, no. oh, God. Well, so like at the top of your subreddit is calling him a fucking traitor. And it's like, did you not read the indictment? So when it comes to espionage indictments, um, governments like the, at least Britain and, and the United States will not give any hint of innocence or guilt if they are still under investigation. And if they are suspicious that they are guilty, they will not give any of that hint of innocence. So that's not going to fucking happen. So calling the traitor is just fucking stupid. And by the way, this case is working out the best way possible. The actual traitor's Canadian. The fucking useful idiots are American, which you know, it, and they're but they're right wingers. So it's all it's all playing out nice. We've got the uh, we got them. It's being dismantled. That's great. This couldn't have gone better. But no, Tim is a fucking moron. But I'm not defending him. Just be fucking accurate in how you guys portray him. He's not a traitor. He didn't know, and the DOJ wouldn't have said that. Mm. They were still suspicious. I think he's probably and a traitor, and I think he probably did know that this was shady as fuck. That's no, way no, too... no, they wouldn't. They would not have done that. The DOJ would not have done wouldn't... I'm not talking about the DOJ. I'm saying Tim Pool should have known better. Tim Pool. No, but I'm he... saying if he did know better, they would know it. 
they're not, but they're not they're doing said. an indictment on if he knows better. First of all, we don't know what they even know about him. He could be, end up being indicted. We don't know. Oh, I'm just saying. I'm sorry. But maybe also, I'm getting confused. I'm just, not know better if he knew. He, you don't think he knew? He, I think he probably did. But um, I don't know if they could have proven that. I don't know if he would have said that to Lauren Chen or not. But he should have known. Th- this is just way too much money for this type of content. He should have absolutely you know, if you If you had like, doesn't he have like three channels of over one to two million subs each? Yep. If you had that and someone offered you and said, hey, we need to build it out. And you would have been immediately suspicious when it's like, what, you don't want exclusive? If you're offering 100K per video with no call to action, with no exclusivity, with no uh, KPIs, no key performance indicators, no nothing. Yeah, of course. That's way too much money. Okay. Well, it's like Mr. Beast creator. level, maybe. I don't even know if Mr. Beast could sell deals like this. It's just way, 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 way too much money. He got paid $5 million over a year, and he didn't even drive like a million views to this channel. It was insane. Yeah. Hold on. Sending you, uh, I need to call in a JDAM. Jesus. Okay. Anything else? No. <laughs> well, no, I have, I have a lot else, but I'm getting fucking triggered. Oh, well. Uh, let's see. No, nah, I'm sure I'll come back. I'm pissed off now. I'll talk to you later. <laughs> yeah, I love you. Be careful. Jesus Christ. Um, okay, what do we got? Here you see on the screen the pro- the, the indictment from, uh, actually, this is uh, the press release from the Justice Department. Now, just remember, we're talking here about the Biden Justice Department. Indict- so what? So? But, well, okay, sorry. Maybe he's got something fair to say about that. Department indicting the Russians two months before an election based on the obvious narrative that the Russians are interfering in our sacred democracy in order once again to elect Donald Trump. It is. No, no, what? Based on the obvious narrative that the Russians are interfering in our sacred democracy in order once again to elect Donald Trump. I don't know if any of this explicitly had to do with Donald Trump. I think that the accusations centered on the type of content that they were amplifying were just divisive issues in America. But okay. It is a comp- Also, R. Why is he saying R? Is he even a U.S. citizen? Do you know? If- no, he went to school in the United States. He must be, right? Does he have dual citizenship with whatever South America? Is, he- is it Bolivia or... Is he allowed to say R? Oh, he was born in New York City. Okay, so he absolutely is a citizen. Wait, is he a dual citizen at all? Or am I just making this up? I thought he was, um, I thought he had citizenship in somewhere in South America. Maybe his husband was South American. I don't even know where he lives right now. Okay, you can say R, I guess. Complete politicization and abuse of the justice system in the most flagrant ways possible. Oh, actually, and also, I'm so sorry. Hold on. He might be talking about the other release from the Justice Department. He might not be talking about the indictments uh, the indictments that we went over relating to Lauren Chen. I'm so sorry. So when he's talking about that, the Russian narrative for getting Trump elected or whatever, he might be referring to that. It's a separate, like, 230-page thing that we haven't, um, we haven't read yet on the stream. So he might be talking about that. Well, the headline reads, quote, two RT employees are— Never mind. Just kidding. He's a fucking reader. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> are indicted for covertly funding and directing U.S. companies. I'm trying. That publish th- I'm trying to be charitable out here, okay? Thousands of videos in furtherance of Russian interest. Quote, an indictment charging Russian nationals, Konstantin Kolashnikov, 31, also known as Kostya, and Elena Avansavia, 27, also known as Lena, with conspiracy to violate the Foreign Agents Restrictions Act and conspiracy to commit money laundering was unsealed today in a New York court. They're both at large. The Justice Department has charged the two employees of URT, a Russian state-controlled media, in a $10 million scheme to create and distribute content to U.S. audiences with hidden Russian government messaging, said Attorney General Merrick Garland. Quote, the Justice Department will not tolerate attempts by an authoritarian regime to exploit our country's free exchange of ideas in order to covertly fund its own propaganda efforts and our investigation today into this matter remains ongoing. Now, just to give you a little bit of context, Again, let's assume everything in the indictment is true, even though it's just a series of government unproven assertions. 
that a grand jury accepted because as the old saying goes, a grand jury will- Don't say the indicted ham sandwich, lying you fucking piece of shit. I was just about to bring up how many lying lawyer fucks bring this ham sandwich thing up. Indict a ham, a ham sandwich. Every lawyer that brings this up is lying to you. Lawyers lie more than anybody else, okay? The standard for an indictment, the standard for an indictment is probable cause. The standard for a conviction is beyond a reasonable doubt. You do not bring an indictment when the only thing you think you're ever going to get is the standard for the indictment. And the proof of that is the fact that 90 plus percent of federal indictments end in a conviction or a plea deal. Okay? So this, you can indict your ham sandwich is something anytime a lawyer tells you that, they're a lying scumbag piece of shit. Every single fucking time. This is a federal indictment, okay? Some estimates will say as high as a 98% conviction rate, depending on if you count, uh, you know, drop charges or not, dismiss charges or not, right? The idea, the idea here, oh, you're going to indict anything for anybody. Uh, that is true. Like, on paper, that's true. But the reality is, is federal prosecutors aren't going to indict somebody if they think the only thing they're ever going to find is probable cause, okay? It's a lie. It's a fucking lie that dipshit lawyers try to pass off when they think that a person doesn't know better, right? Just like in our debate, when this fucking, when this skeevy fuck tried to pass off the Hawaiian elector shit because he didn't think I knew anything about it. Um, he did the same fucking thing. They know. He knows better than this. He knows better than this. He knows better. He knows and he lies. He knowingly lies, because that's what a lie is. It's not just getting something law. wrong. It's telling a lie when you know that it's a fucking lie. Okay? Twenty twenty election, which was Joe Biden. What, real that quick, just on that explanation. What happened. What, what happened in nineteen sixty that was comparable? All right, let me, let me, let me because I, I think it's a good point to kind of like summarize. We've been going almost two hours, which is like what we said was our kind of our goal. But so let me just tell you about all of that, my view of, of what all those events are, which is that as has happened before in elections, in American elections, when people perceived or believed that there was fraud in the election and the illegitimate winner uh, was, was certified and the uh, legitimate winner was declared the loser, as has happened previously, Trump exercised all of his legal recourses. He was the leader of the executive branch and he went to the two other branches of government, first to the courts, and then when that failed, to the Congress using a theory that some lawyers had told him, and I don't mean like personal injury lawyers, that he picked for that reason. No, your lawyers sorry. who had previously- They were personal lawyers. They were personal lawyers, actually. Fuck, I don't even know if I knew enough to know how much stupid shit. I already knew he was saying so much stupid shit. There's even more stupid shit about what he's saying here. Wait, do I call him out on this? He's even regarded as some of the most prominent and prestigious lawyers. Like no, Rudy they weren't, no. Giuliani, not by- Rudy Giuliani was a prominent and prestigious constitutional lawyer? was a prominent and prestigious member of the Department of Justice, was a prominent and prestigious counsel in the White House, was a prominent, what are you talking about? The guy did RICO cases three decades ago. What do you mean prominent prestige? I don't even know if he was the, the lead prosecutor on these criminal cases. Me, but by many people celebrated for many years and John Sorry. Eastman, people like that, had told him that this was a role the vice president had had. There was an incident in 1960, albeit different, Hold that on. could have suggested that that was part of the vice president's duty. He went to Congress in order to appeal to the le legislative power. And when that failed, when he exercised all of his legal options in the judiciary and failed and then exercised his recourse in the Congress and failed, he walked out of the White House on January 20th before noon peacefully and turned over peacefully the levers of power to the certified winner of the 2020 election. Which was it's funny because Rudy is still way more of a lawyer than Destiny Abrolli. Actually, Rudy might be as much of a lawyer as I am right now. Hold on. Let's check. Has Rudy been formally disbarred yet? Rudy Giuliani disbarred in New York. So actually, you're wrong. Me and Rudy Giuliani are both about this. Actually, if anything, I might be more of a lawyer than Rudy Giuliani because I don't know if you can go from being disbarred to being barred again. So I might be able to be a lawyer in the future. And I don't know if Rudy Giuliani can ever be a lawyer again. I'm not sure how that works. Joe Biden. Wait, real quick, that just on that explanation, what happened. What, what happened in 1960 that was comparable to this event? There was like... Fuck. Wait, did he just bring it up right here? Or did he bring it up earlier? Sorry. Peacefully and turned over peacefully the levers of power to the certified winner of the 2020 election, which was Joe Biden. Wait, real that quick, just on that explanation. Oh, wait. He brought up. He brought up. were committed by fraud. In fact, he's going to bring up Russia Gate. The last three elections that they yeah. lost were illegitimate. Uh, in 1960, historians widely believe that that election was stolen by a combination of voter fraud in Chicago that made John Kennedy the winner over Richard Nixon. There was every talking point. Whatever you can not engage with the actual of, of electors. Of 1876, there was a huge pervasive allegations of voter fraud. You can sit there and mutter all you want, Destiny. I'm not going to play on your little field. If you don't want to look at history, you don't want to put this in context. If the reason is, it's because you have blinders on. You only know the CNN version of the world. You're one of those people who only began paying attention. Okay, so then let's just what he said. So in response to what he said, I know you're upset. I know facts are hard. I know I'm sorry. So the reason why I'm upset that you brought up 1960 and... Fuck. I don't want to retread this whole fucking debate. Fuck, hold on. Wait, where do I bring up the Hawaii thing? 
said him to coup, nothing short of laughable. That's right fine. now, there's a lot of people yeah. who hate Trump enough. Yeah. They're willing to believe anything about him, but I think ultimately that's how it will be understood. That's fine. I'm sorry, a failed coup is still a coup. When True, it is. Well, and it's the reason I never thought Mike Pence had that was the one time in history after he long been advising Donald Trump on a whole bunch of legal matters had come up with this theory was because that was the one time in history after 18... Wait. Hold on, I'm trying to find this point. I don't have these all fucking bookmarked, okay? Then John Kennedy, on a recount, was declared the winner as the certified vote. They sent both slates of electors. Oh, okay, this was it, sorry. Okay, I asked him, I asked him to explain the 1960 elector thing. Peacefully and turned over peacefully the levers of power to the certified winner of the 2020 election, which was Joe Biden. Wait, real that quick, just on that is, explanation, what happened. What, what happened in 1960 that was comparable to this event? There was a dispute about which... Uh, candidate had won Hawaii, whether it was Richard Nixon or John Kennedy. First, Richard Nixon was declared the winner. Then John Kennedy, on a recount, was declared the winner as the certified vote. They sent both slates of electors to the Congress, and Richard Nixon, presiding over the Senate, like Mike Pence, serving that function, declared that the real winner of Hawaii was John F. Kennedy. The reason I say it's not comparable is because in that case, the state had certified exactly. the last so, resort. But, yeah, that's great. Well, so I'm actually, I mean, I, 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 so he brought this, he brought this 1960 thing up as an example, okay? But the problem with using a lot of a lot of conservatives run to this like 1960 elector slate thing, say like, oh, multiple electors had been submitted in 1960. But as he just accurately described in Hawaii, the reason why they submitted two was because the vote difference was like 136 votes and they had to do a recount. So the state legislature sent in two authorized set of elector slates to be chosen, you know, whoever won the recount when they got the Congress or whatever. Um, but he knows all of this information, but he brought it up any anyways. Sorry, fuck me. I'll, I'll have this more concisely. Uh, point next time. I only bring that up just to say that, like, when he says things like this, oh, you can eat that ham sandwich, he's knowingly, he's knowingly 100% lying to you, and he knows that that's bullshit. He knows that this is not a good point. Um, he knows that you don't just indict on a ham sandwich hunch, right? Uh, I, I quote tweeted in my link this, like, you can look, and you can look at federal indictments, and a huge percentage of these either end up in convictions, okay, or you plead guilty to them. Um, the idea that federal indictments are just whatever is fucking retarded, Okay. In fiscal year 2022, only 290 of 71,954 defendants in federal criminal cases, about 0.4%, went to trial and were acquitted. But, okay. Sorry. I hate this guy. Unproven assertions that a grand jury accepted because, as the old saying goes, a grand jury will indict a ham, a ham sandwich because there's no defendant there to contest anything. They only hear the prosecutor's version of events. Yes. That's how uh, that's how probable cause works. There is no you don't defend yourself at the at the charging stage of a crime. Like you can't argue if a cop finds marijuana in your car or whatever, and marijuana is illegal in your state. You don't you can't argue your case at that point. You're they only need probable cause to arrest you. What are you talking about? So let's assume that everything is true. That basically the crux of the allegation that the media predictably is trumpeting all over the place is that RT spent roughly ten million dollars. In order to pay for the placement of videos that do things like question the war in Ukraine, that criticize U.S. Uh, foreign policy. And the argument is, is that it was done with disguise. In other words, they pretended that it was an American company that was actually offering this money, entering into a contract, when in fact it was the Russians behind it and that that was concealed. $10 million. Put that in context. $10 million. In August alone, the Kamala Harris campaign in one month raised $230 million. The Trump campaign just this month raised $180 million. What is the point of these comparisons? I, what, what is the... Presidential campaigns of the major parties now spend close to a billion dollars in total. A billion dollars just on paid advertising. Then you add all the free media propaganda that comes from CNN and MSNBC, Fox News, The New York Times. He's paid. He's got to be paid. This guy's paid too. 100%. <laughs> what a talking point. From, from The Washington Post, The Wall Street Journal. And then on to that, the entire independent media. You're talking about billions and billions of dollars of messaging about the presidential candidates, the presidential campaign over this course of many, many months, usually about a year and a half. That was one of the things that always made Russiagate such a joke to me from the start was that even if it were true, Aside from the fact that the U.S. does all of this and, and much, much more, but even if it were true, the idea that a few fake Russian accounts on Facebook with a couple of hundred followers 
and dozens of this is like yeah this is like hack shit he should just be banned from doing media in the u.s you this isn't good for democracy okay there there has to be room for people to disagree but we have to be able to draw a line between people that just blatantly fucking lie there has to be a way to cut these people out of the media uh apparatus i don't know how i don't know if it should be legally culturally technologically like the private i don't know how but this like this stealing of oxygen from any legitimate take is so destructive fake Russian accounts on Facebook with a couple of hundred followers and dozens of Russian bots with no followers on Twitter somehow is sufficient to sway the election in favor of Donald Trump, given the massive amounts of establishment money that are poured into. Like, listen to how stupid the talking point is. Is that really enough to to sway the election? Is that really enough? Like, did wasn't the last election over by what was it like 30,000 votes across seven different states? You don't think 30,000 people could be influenced by some bullshit online? Like, in this race to determine the outcome of this election? It's just, it is laughable on its face. This is all designed to create that same narrative. Now, here's one of the specific allegations. Quote, according to the court documents, RT, formerly known as Russia Today, is a state-controlled media outlet funded and directed by the government of Russia. Over the last year, RT and its employees, including the two indicted Russians, deployed nearly $10 million, $10 million. In, a, in an election where billions of dollars determine the outcome, to covertly finance and direct a Tennessee-based online content creation company. In turn, U.S. Company One published English language videos on multiple social media channels, including TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube. Now they're talking there about that company I mentioned that pretended to want to pay for their content to be on a company that publishes people like uh, Benny Johnson and uh, Tim Pool and, and Dave Rubin, but even the indictment themselves itself says they were deceived. They had no idea that this had anything to do with Russia. They thought that it was just a U.S. Uh, company. But again, you're talking about a minuscule amount of money in the context of what is spent on our elections, let alone what the U.S. spends to influence the internal politics of other countries, including Russia. Based. I just think it's silly that Destiny has been on this Wikipedia law expert journey. It's sad to watch. If I'm wrong about anything, feel free to chime in, my dude. I had tons of lawyers on the stream. I get tons of lawyers on my emails. I argued with Eastman's lawyer. I mean, like, you, if you want to throw anybody into the fucking battle arena, okay? <laughs> Have them grab a sword and shield and post up. I still don't, I get, I don't know. I don't understand any of it. I think they're just really, really bad at what they do. Here's the funny thing. Maybe you should, literally, I mean, like, why is NATO expanding? But Russia invaded Ukraine. Let's go back more. For curated algo feeds being first party speech. That's interesting, too. Yeah, I saw people talking a little bit about that, that algorithms may be speech. So Portland Trainhorn says war is BS. F them all. Stop trying to come after our firearms because I'm psycho does some stupid crap. Awesome YouTube censor speech. In have to make some crap up. Mm. You know, look, war is bad, but I'm not naive. The idea that the U.S. backs off from the global stage results in less war is not correct. I think war and conflict is the state of, of, of the world and always has been. And the peace we've maintained over the past several decades is lucky. What a... <sighs> I gotta get out of here. It's actually such a stupid... It's such a stupid fucking statement. And it's just pure luck that somehow the last few decades have been relatively peaceful. It's just, it's just luck. I'm just trying to navigate less war because of the consequences. And I don't see why escalation in Ukraine is good for the United States. I, I don't see it. The, the, the argument that Putin will continue to expand doesn't mean anything to me. If Putin attacks a NATO ally, now we've got an issue. Not that I'm a big fan of NATO because I don't know what it's doing. Like literally, I mean like, why is NATO expanding? But Russia invaded Ukraine. And it's just like, I don't know what to tell you. Maybe, maybe you should have imposed a no-fly zone over Ukraine before the invasion. That's not even possible. What are you talking about? What, we're going to shoot down Russian planes over Ukraine that's not a member of NATO or an official U.S. ally? What, what does that even mean? What? And then there would have been justification for act of war. Ukraine could have been made an ally of the United States. Oh, so wait, so Ukraine should have joined NATO? Or... Uh, so at a treaty, or they could have stated that they were going to enforce the, 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 the treaty from the 90s after the removal of nuclear weapons and enforce a no-fly zone. And then when Russia moved in, this would have been a declaration of war on us. I still don't, I, get, I don't know. I don't understand any of it. I think they're just really, really bad at what they do.
Here's the funny thing about all of the people claiming that, um, like, we're getting paid by Russia or whatever. That's not true. We received money from a U.S. company, uh, from an individual that we knew for a very long time. That was, oh, so you knew her for a long time? So what, did she deceive you the whole fucking time? Are you just fucking retarded then? You can't tell when somebody is compromised? So that means we shouldn't take your, uh, we shouldn't take your word for anybody being not compromised, right? Since you have no idea, you don't know, right? You knew her for a long time. You were a close friend. She was entirely compromised. She was doing money laundering and taking money from a foreign source. And then she fucking lied to you about it. She lied to you about it and you didn't know. You had no inkling whatsoever they're getting paid half a million dollars a month for your dog shit videos that are doing worse views on your channel than fucking Gistigal does on his fucking streams. You don't think that maybe there was some weird shit going on? You had no idea? How investigative of you. Nice. Paid by Russia or whatever. That's not true. We received money from a U.S. company, uh, from an individual that we knew for a very long time. And uh, I will stress, it's funny because people don't know the value of money. And so as the... Everyone in chat is saying there's a shot at Gistigal. It's not a shot at Gistigal. Tim Pool is one of the largest political podcast people on the internet. The fact that his view, his videos were doing so poorly is unbelievable. A long time. And uh, I will stress, it's funny because people don't know the value of money. And so as the numbers listed in, this, in these documents, they're probably slightly below market. You're fucking lying. You're lying. He's a fucking liar. And you, he is right that people don't know money. So people don't know how much money Tim Pool gets paid, but he's lying that these are below market values. And I can tell you that as somebody that makes seven figures a year on YouTube, he is lying. You do, you absolutely will never see a creator of his size getting paid that much money with no call to action, with no products being sold, with no affiliate link, with no KP, no key performance indicators, no uh, minimum viewership threshold. No, uh, no incentives for uh, for certain viewership thresholds or for certain product numbers sold for for no content direction uh, for not featuring it. It's absolutely not true. He is lying. He is lying. Funny because people don't know the value of money, and so as the numbers listed in this in these documents, they're probably slightly below market. Not kidding. Not a joke. Take a look at what um, I'll put it this way. Look at what Travis Kelsey got for his podcast: a hundred million dollars for three years. Who's Travis Kelly? Travis Kelly podcast. Is it Machine Gun Kelly? Taylor Swift's boy? Taylor Swift's boyfriend? Okay, wait. Travis Kelly. Is it Kelly or Kelsey? Podcast. 100 million? I, fuck, I don't know anything about podcasts. Is this like a super ultra popular? I mean, if it's fucking Taylor Swift's boyfriend. <laughs> Let's read this real quick. Also, keep in mind the difference even in what we're talking about. This is to have your entire podcast probably exclusively delivered on a podcast platform. Okay, so every single episode is owned by Amazon. They have exclusive rights for distribution and marketing, right? You, this is a totally different kind of deal. And it's apparently it's an NFL fucking football player who's dating fucking Taylor Swift. What the fuck? Like, why would you go to the literally the most expensive? This is probably, and this is probably one of the most expensive podcast deals of all time. What did Joe Rogan get? Um, how much was his shit? Up to 250 million, right? Oh, is said up to be worth up to. That means, that probably means that there are, um, um, you wouldn't call them milestones, right? Would you just call it incentives in a contract for hitting like certain viewership goals or certain distribution rates or whatever, um, performance goals or whatever? Um, exclusive advertising sales and distribution rights to their New Heights show. Yeah, of course. So in a deal like this, obviously. Wondery will have exclusive rights to all audio and video episodes of the podcast, including its back catalog. And we'll have the rights to monetize and distribute the episodes, create and sell merchandise, and create international adaptations of the podcast. So it sounds like they don't even get ads or whatever on the show, right? They don't get paid for any of that. It's just the flat hundred. I mean, not that that's bad, but. New Heights was the fourth biggest podcast in the United States across all platforms for the first quarter of 2024. Though it dropped to number 14 in the second quarter after football season ended. Imagine comparing you to this. <laughs> oh, my God. 
when he has un non-exclusive non-exclusive videos that he can repost to his own fucking channel with no content direction at all. Unreal. Unreal. Take a look at what, um, I'll put it this way. Look at what Travis Kelsey got for his podcast, $100 million for three years, and then look at the offer, the money that was being paid in the indictment, okay? Then look at the size of Travis Kelsey's podcast compared to the people that were being signed, and we'll call that, like, market comparable or below market, whatever. Let's go and grab some more Super Chats. They, except they didn't buy your whole podcast. They didn't buy your show. You were just making content for them. He's relying on the audience here, not knowing how any of these deals work. However, I will say also, this is actually, um, this is part for the course for Tim. Because Tim did the same thing when he lied and misrepresented the Steven Crowder argument with the Daily Wire. Anybody that's ever signed a single uh, per, uh, entertainment contract in their life knows that Steven Crowder was lying and was full of shit when he was fighting with the Daily Wire over their contract stuff. They they know that, uh, oh, Steven Crowder, this is a public power play. That's what he's doing. Because obviously he's being bad faith with the way that he's talking about the contract here. And Tim Pool, I, I, I even asked Tim Pool if I could come on and talk about this. And they were, this is back when we were talking. Uh, and they were totally silent on me coming on and uh, debating this point. Uh, and now I see why. It's because they don't ever want to be challenged on issues where they're completely fucking grifting. Um, the, uh, the, the, the Steven Crowder is just 100% in the wrong there. Uh, yeah, but, but Tim Pool defended him, you know, both, both nuts and the dick in his mouth at the same time. Steven says, as Putin famously told Schwab to take the WEF and pound sand. Hmm. Elizabeth Swim says, Steven Crowder just broke some major news around Trump lawfare. All right. Let's, uh. And that's it. And then we go. Yeah, true. It's the same thing Glenn Greenwald did when he compared it to all the advertising that was happening or all the fundraising that was done for all the politics in the United States and compared it to this company. Yeah. Jesus. Ah, petrodollar. I guess I got petrodollar memes in here. Uh, let's see what he's got. We'll pull up ladderwithcrowder.com. Lawfare against Trump undercover cam. And, uh... Let's pull it up and talk about it. You know, I don't got any other segments. Let's grab this one. It's 1130. We can, uh, we can do this one. All right, everybody. We got this breaking story from Louder with Crowder. I've not yet read it. Uh, this show is live. And this was uh, sent to me in our super chats while we were live Implying streaming. you read things off stream. Good one. And so we're going to go through the story. I'm going to read it in real time with you guys. Lawfare against Trump. Trump. DOJ chief of public affair alleges, quote, it's a perversion of justice. Wow. Take a look at this. A lot of Crowder's Mug Club undercover unit released a new video today exposing the political lawfare President Trump has faced over the last 18 months. Nicholas Bias, uh, Biasse, a senior official at the U.S. Department of Justice, Southern District of New York, explained what he calls a perversion of justice led by Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg to hurt the current Republican nominee's chance in the 2024 presidential election. Led by a, a new video today exposed. Wow. It's Tr Trump, DOJ chief of public. DOJ chief of public affairs. I like how that makes it sound like we're talking about federal cases, but now he's talking about Alvin Bragg, which is a state case from New York, but okay. Public Crowder's Mug Club undercover unit. Oh man, do I want to watch this guy go through an actual article? I might, this is like watching Hassan read anything having to do with anything. Oh God. At least a new video today exposing the political lawfare President Trump has faced over the last 18 months. Nicholas Bias, uh, Biasse, a senior official at the U.S. Department of Justice, Southern District of New York, explained what he calls a perversion of justice led by Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg. Who is this guy? Nicholas um, Biasse? The, wait. He's a spokesman? Oh, and it's a secret recording piece. Oh, some good Project Veritas stuff. Okay. To hurt the current Republican nominee's chance in the 2024 presidential election. He was stacking charges and, like, rearranging things just to make it fit a case. No, honestly, I think the case against Trump and NYC is nonsense. Every real estate person in New York does what Trump did. Nobody's ever been charged with this. It's all, it's all him. That's why, like, he's surging in the polls. You know it's a perversion of justice. Wow. Wait, does it, is this even referring to what he got? This is for the real estate case? Did that case ever even go through? Or this isn't even about what he got in, um, this isn't even about what he got convicted on, no? How long ago, how old are these recordings?
breaking. So, so these aren't even these aren't even the things that Trump was convicted for. What, do you think he even knows that? Oh, do they have the actual video here? They do. Let's uh. Let's... Oh, so this is. It. Oh, this is the video. Stacking charges and like, rearranging things to make the case nonsense. Wow. To make him a <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Wait, you're watching the. It's, is this the, the streamer equivalent? Like, wow, that's crazy, chat. Oh, this is it. Oh, this is the video. Stacking charges and like, rearranging things just to make the case the case nonsense. Wow. To make him a convict, a convicted felon. They look at his scandals. He's a convicted felon. Right? It's a travesty of justice, a mockery of justice. Is that Alvin Bragg's choice to do that? Or? Why? Because Alvin's very ambitious. What do you mean? He wants to be, um, you know, something. I don't know what. A mayor. I I'm not sure what he wants to be, but I know he's not happy just being the DA. This is crazy. This is the Southern. <laughs> What's crazy? You haven't even heard anything yet. Southern District of Southern District of New York, DOJ, Public Affairs, an undercover camera stating that Donald Trump is the victim of legal lawfare with an unjust case. This is huge. Oh my god. Wait, this is so fucking cringe. He doesn't even know what the fuck he's reading about. This is huge. Is it is this just, is this all just an act? Wait, is this normal show like this? This is actually so fucking cringe. Donald Trump is the victim of legal lawfare with an unjust case. This is huge. Holy crap. Wow. The point of prosecuting Trump was to make him into a convict. It affects his candidacy if he's a convicted felon. The SDNY spokesman wanted to explain just how well he knows Alvin Bragg. He also details why he believes Bragg moved forward with indicting Trump. Before he decided to prosecute Trump, did you know who he was? You do now, Alvin Bragg, who I've known for 15 years, who used to work in my office. Alvin is very ambitious. I used to work with him for 10 years. I mean, we know each other really well, but like, do I respect what he's doing? No. The U.S. Department of Justice Chief of Public Affairs agreed with the Mugglove undercover journalist that President Trump was undergoing a process of political lawfare, where Trump's Democrat political opponents are using the judicial system to affect electoral results. Notice how they don't bring up that what Trump was convicted for has nothing to do with the case being discussed here, but... The assay cited the Fulton County, Georgia prosecutor, Fonnie Willis, as a prime example of an unethical prosecutor. <laughs> the Fonnie Willis case in Fulton County, Georgia, is a travesty of justice. To put it mildly, it's a mockery of justice. She is a joke. The whole thing is disgusting. They just have to get him, the senior DOJ official said. Americans will not vote for a criminal. The Democrat machine, the swamp, and bad actors have falsely made Trump out to be a criminal. This revolution, revelation proves that Trump is no criminal. Let's, uh, we'll, we'll play more from this uh, clip. This revelation proves that Donald Trump is no criminal. No criminal? So his felonies didn't count? Even though it was about a totally different case that's not even being discussed here? Why didn't they ask him about the, the felonies that he was convicted on? Why not ask about the actual relevant case? Be a criminal. This revolution, revelation proves that Trump is no criminal. Let's, uh, we'll, we'll play more from this uh, clip. New York County. So this is, like, before he decided to prosecute Trump, did you know who he was? I do now. What was the point of even doing it then? Oh, he's texting Dimitri right now. Is there anything else I need to cover, sir? Him a convict. Make him what? Convict yourself. I hope he can still run for presidency and... Yeah, but it affects his candidacy. This is a convicted felon. I was trying to count off. I was like, I wonder, like, how many are against him. So how does this even happen? How can it happen? How can the local and state level courts? For the ADIQs out there, can you please explain to us how this is different to Qatar having their BS think tank slash new reporting to push Muslim Brotherhood propaganda or APAC lobbying? Um, okay. In the United States of America, if you're taking money from a foreign government or if you're taking direction from a foreign government, you have to report that to the United States State Department in accordance with a rule, uh, a rule law uh, called FARHA, not FARHA, FARA, which is the Foreign Agents Registration Act, okay? APAC does not take money from or does not take direction from anybody working for Israel for their content or for who they lobby for. It's just a group of people in the United States that they are interested in protecting Israel, right? Much the same that if me and Dan and a bunch of people got together and we made a group called, what does APEC even stand for? American Israeli Public Affairs. If we made like AMPAC, the American Mexican Public Affairs Company, Corp, what does C stand for? Oh, 
Hello? Why would you not have this on your fucking about page? Fuck you. Committee. If we made AMPAC, okay, the American Mexican Public Affairs Committee, and we wanted to promote, because we think it's important to be more friendly with uh, Mexico, and we wanted to promote that, as long as we're not taking money from Mexico um, and not reporting it, and as long as we're not taking content direction from Mexico and we're not reporting it, we're fine. You can do that. You're allowed to advocate for other countries' interests in the United States as U.S. citizens. And I think even, maybe even as foreign nationals, you're allowed to do that, as long as you're not taking direction or money from anybody uh, from another country. You're totally allowed to do that. Um, when you say, when you talk about like Qatar influence in the United States, if it's disclosed, you're allowed to do that as well. If people, if Qatar is sending money to the U.S. in some way, and the people are funded by it, and they're vocal about that, and they say that, uh, hey, um, here's a uh, here's a uh, money that uh, you know we are disclosing this funding to uh, via FARA to the State Department from whatever, you're allowed to do that as well. That's your your these are all okay things. You just can't lie about it. This feels like a loophole that goes against the spirit. No, that's not true. It is not a loophole, and it doesn't go against the spirit. The spirit is if a foreign director is directing a company uh, working in the United States, we should know about it. It's not illegal for other countries to make their desires or wills or whatever known to the American people, even working through American companies. We just should know about it. That disclosure is important. Um, I was just going to say one thing in regards to the FAR Act. I was like reading up on it the last couple of days, and it, it doesn't— for since it's been around since like I think 1955, it hasn't been prosecuted like more than like five or six times. So for whatever reason, in the states, for a good 50 years, they just never even touched the act, and if ever, like it's never used. And then in the last, I would say seven to ten years, especially in regards to like Russian-related stuff, you've definitely seen an uptick. Um, but do you find it odd that an act that's been on the books for this long has literally never been used much at all, considering how much? You, you believe it's probably more probable that there's a lot of foreign involvement in American politics that should have been considered under the FAR Act for the last 50 years? Uh, not that I'm aware of. I mean, I don't know any evidence for it. It's, it's just possible that now it's so much easier to coordinate this stuff and it's so much easier to do this that maybe now it's more likely that people are going to do it than they would have like 30, 40, 50 years ago. Okay. Like now, like think about, think about before. I'm only guessing. I don't know how sophisticated all the tech is, but like think about before if somebody's bringing in money to the United States in suitcases or some shit, maybe, or even for bank deposits, I don't know how hard it was to track that. Nowadays, fucking everything is digital and electronic. Like if I'm the FBI, I can get your whole financial life like at my fingertips in, in probably like 20 or 30 minutes of subpoenaing and like, or however long it takes the, for the people to respond to the requests. So maybe it's a okay. lot easier to find out. Yeah, go, sorry. How bad do you think it is to operate on behalf of a foreign government in this manner and not disclose the fact that you are taking money from them and, and, and occupying on the breath how 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 egregious of a sin do you think that is um honestly as a category of crimes i would say that it's i think that that can run the gamut all the way from not really that serious at all all the way to being incredibly and very serious so like for instance like let's say that like um just just before oh, the reason why i'm saying this in terms of crime the crime is the lack of disclosure so what would make the lack of disclosure more severe to you that it can go through such a wide range right that's what I'm questioning. Well, yeah, yeah. So, like, saying, like, there could be a country, like, let's say Indonesia comes to me and they're like, listen, we really, really, really think that more people should be Indonesian tourists. Like, can you please talk about this on your stream? We'll give you, like, $20,000 to say you had a really good vacation in Indonesia, right? Um, that Now, I believe that should be disclosed to the U.S. State Department. You're taking for money, content direction, media, all that, right? But, like, let's say you do that, you don't report it. Like, is that really that bad? I mean, like, you should, and it's bad that you didn't do it. But, like, it's not like you're contrary to interests of the United States or you're trying to fuck over somebody. Um, I think it gets more and more bad when you're starting to advocate on behalf of, I would say, America's enemies or at least people whose interests are dramatically contrary to ours. I think that makes it more bad. But for the crime itself, I don't know if that impacts, like, the sentencing on the crime. or if there It, are it other probably shouldn't because I think if the crime is just really about transparency, then it shouldn't really matter in regards to which – like, I understand for severity from a public relations standpoint, it should matter. But this is really a matter of transparency and making sure that you disclose the information when you're involved. I don't think it really should matter where that comes from unless, like, there's other acts that you plan on charging from. Even for Lauren Chen, like, do you – realize how much jail time she might be facing if she does get convicted which a lot of people even when convicted for this act don't face jail time how much time do you think she's going to face uh i have no idea because i don't know what other crimes she may or may not have co um, committed the thing is the thing that is probably uh, the scary crime isn't the fact that it's uh isn't the fact that it's the far violation it's the fact that it's a sanction violation that might be a really big deal so for the, the past two years yeah so for the past two years the united states has sanctioned the russian government that means even with disclosure you can't be working with russia and sanction violations might be a much larger deal i'm not sure uh, okay 
uh, when I was reading up on that, I guess I didn't miss that portion. I thought the money laundry was the part where they're probably going to get axed the most. Because when I was looking at Robert Mueller's previous um, fire convictions, some of those people in those, um, I believe it was related to Trump, some of those people got zero jail time or like 25 months or sure. like 40 yeah. months. I guess. In and of itself, yeah. it's probably not like the biggest deal of crime ever. Sure. It's, but if you're doing it to, to commit other crimes, it's probably really bad. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's get back to it. Okay. Um, okay, where were we? Am I done with this? Try President Trump with more ease and less red tape than the federal courts. That doesn't seem right to the uninitiated, but you are the uninitiated. Good thing, uh, Biasi isn't. I mean, at the federal level where I work, there is a 90-day rule where you can't make any decisions on cases that are going to affect an election. That rule does not apply at the state level, because the state levels are... Wild West. They're like idiots. They don't care. They're all political. Uh, <laughs> okay, that's one way to say that, but okay. <laughs> I don't even know how true that 90 day rule. That 90 day rule is probably not like a hard rule. That 90 day rule is probably just like a guideline, right? Is this a Veritas clip? No, it's uh, Stephen Crowder now does Project Veritas stuff. Now that O'Keefe is like out of the business, I guess somebody has to step up and take the reins. Wait, hold on one second. We are talking. Oh, this. Talking about crime and punishment and Donald Trump needs to go after these people. Laura was saying, take the gloves off. Stop being nice to them. Fuck them. And I said they should all be arrested. There should be lists. Laura said we should give anyone who committed treason the death penalty. And then the show gone because YouTube doesn't allow calls for the death penalty. That's why they deleted our episode of Alex Jones the first time it happened three years ago. And he didn't even say anything crazy. He said, I agree with Bill Gates. We should have firing squads. And he later was like, I, I meant. Vaccines, line them up, give them shots, get them, get them, get them. Mm. He was being, he was, it's like I was making a joke. I was sarcastically well, I'm saying. Not, I'm not going to pull an Alex Jones. I stand by everything I said. <laughs> I'm not sorry for anything I said. I truly believe that people, there may be different, uh, different. Wait, this isn't a recent episode, is it? Is this the same one that we're about to rewatch? Or this is the same one that we've tweeted before, right? Just with more context in the beginning. And interpretations of what it means to commit treason. I truly believe that the people who engaged in the coup against Donald Trump and have caused, you know, civil unrest and chaos in our country for the last seven years uh, this through is the one they okay. and also through, through these, uh, what I believe are illegal witch hunts against the president of the United States right now, unconstitutional witch hunts against Donald Trump, they are treasonous. They are traitors. They should get the death penalty when they are jailed in the next Trump administration. And I'm not going to apologize for what I said. Wait, I this is the same thing, right? Or, I, I mean, this is not the same thing. Is this, did they do a new episode with her? I, you know, was not trying to get your stream taken down, but oh, my okay. belief is held by millions of Americans. And Okay, hold on. So just to be clear, wait, wait, how recent is this episode that this is posted today? You, you're I, saying. I really do when, believe that. When they are arrested, or when they're indicted, arrested, tried, they have a trial. and convicted. Yes. Should they be found to have committed treason by a jury of their peers, you say death penalty. Absolutely. Do you think absolutely 100%? So this was the person that I retweeted initially on an earlier clip where she thought these people should be executed. And Tim said, well, we deleted that episode, but we're not going to have Destiny because he's too extreme. However, she's come back and she said the same thing since then. Crime and punishment. Can anybody find the tweet of him responding to me or somebody else saying that we deleted that episode on YouTube? That's from at least number of months ago. I think it was three months ago. There's Sam Cedar clips talking about it from there. Oh, okay. Are you sure? I'm so, somebody find me what episode this came from. I'm curious. If somebody can find it, I'm really curious. Oh, okay, hold on. This was from three months ago. Tim she, Pool had Laura so she has been on multiple times, though, saying... We'll uncover what you've done. We will... Punishment for treason in this country. Oops. Not just jail. They should get the death penalty. You know, we actually... No, wait, hold on, wait. Is this the same... Wait, so is this the same episode? Talking about crazy he said, said you cause you 
Wait, why is he saying he deleted this if... Country, for they are convicted. They might have taken it off air and then went live again? Okay, I don't, I don't understand. Okay, it's fucking retarded. <laughs> I think they moved to Rumble. Always follow the money from Sebastian Gorka. In February 2023, Lauren Chan approached me to be a face for the new media outlet, Tenant Media. The money looked great, but I wanted to know where it was coming from. Simple question you would think. After pushing repeatedly, she gave me names of people who had no internet footprint, like one Edward Gregorian, uh, or who had zero media connections. I mean, none. It just didn't add up. Warning, if you have a brand and someone wants to leverage it, find out who they are. It's that simple. FYI, according to yesterday's DOJ indictment, Edward Gregorian doesn't even exist and was invented by RT underscore com and the Kremlin. Those caught up in Chen's web should have known better, seriously, unless due diligence wasn't important to them. P.S. I don't trust the Harris slash Biden DOJ as far as I can spit them. After what they did to the innocent J6ers, my White House colleagues, Steve Bannon and Peter Navarro, or Navarro, um, and what they're still doing to my former boss, President Trump, right now. But the tenant op is real. <laughs> I don't believe in any of this stuff, but I do believe in this one thing that I have personal information about. Okay. I'm curious if he... Um, I'm curious if he actually got that offer. Why not post the... Uh, why not post the communications? Since when did you know? Well, we're not all getting that dirty Russian money, okay, to fund our $7,000 month apartment. I can only afford a two-bedroom, $3,500 month apartment in Miami. I'm sorry. True. Yeah, this is, this okay. is my Kremlin penthouse that I'm in. Me, I'll get a bigger apartment. I'll put the washer in the upstairs fucking loft. Okay? When is this? We got a neutral, uh, How many years ago was this? I just pre-watch reality, okay? I pre... Sometimes, listen, I know that I've been late to stream a lot, okay? But it's because pre-watching reality takes... It takes a lot out of my soul, Okay? to be able to read the future this hard, okay? It's a lot of work. What is this? Turns out, uh, okay, I don't know who this guy is, David Sachs. For years, Russiagate hoaxers told us Putin was interfering in our elections to help Trump. Then it turns out Tenet Media was agitating against Trump. So evidently Putin is working for Harris. Hoaxers can't admit that. So now they claim the objective is chaos. Huge backtrack. Oh my God. Every statement like this is the equivalent to conservatives going, oh, you used to say global warming and now you say climate change. This tweet that I'm making is stupid because conservatives really do to argue that. What is the actual objective of the Russian stuff? Uh, when you cause more domestic problems, it makes it hard to have a united front for the rest of the world. So just it weakens US legitimacy abroad and US um, projection of everything abroad. The new DOJ charging documents raise a curious question. DOJ charges two lower-level employees of a Russian front company, but despite providing chapter and verse about the complicity of the two founders of that company, the founders are not charged. My suspicion, based on my prior DOJ experience, the founders were charged a while ago under seal and flipped, i.e. are cooperating with the USG. Is that U.S. government? That could be the case. 